There. Dude. Hey, how you doing? Face. Man, finally I'm we talked. Oh, it's Louie. You had another kid. <laughs> hey, Louie. I got it. I don't, I'm glad. Look at my hair, dude. I just got a gun, so it's in weird mode. Oh, what are you doing? Huh? I'm talking to you. I didn't awesome, Maddie. Awesome, awesome. Let's do this. Also, he does the guitar thing. Mike Barney's going to be on the show. And oh, Mike. Awesome. I talked to Mike quite a bit. Texas. Yeah, he's a good man, dude. Yeah. He, uh, awesome. Without him, we wouldn't be. We, we just No. Well, without you and him, <laughs> let's hey, just be man. honest here. <laughs> the first time, you know, remember Kip and I and Jay went to see you at Eli's after Kip went the first night and called us all yeah. up and said, you got to go see this drummer. He's amazing. He's like 16 years old. He's as good as Neil Peart. And I go, okay. Oh. So we went down there. <laughs> okay, let's check it out. <laughs> and then I had, uh, you know, that's, I had that jacket with flies on it. Yes, dude. Yeah, I, you know what, dude? I remember sitting by the sound bar, or by the uh, the speakers, the sounds, you know, the 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 PA. I was just sitting there, and you came walking up. You were talking to me about this band, Wild Dogs, and stuff. And I was like, well, "That would be kind of cool. That would be kind of cool." It was, man, it changed my life. Let me shit. But <laughs> you know, we did the Malice demos before that. And remember what happened when you touched that that guy's hair? Remember when you touched Jay's hair? Don't touch me. If you value well, our friendship, <laughs> you'll never. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never touch my hair again. <laughs> Good times, bro. Good times. <laughs> yeah. And then we did the Malice demo the, like the next week. Yeah. And the yeah, reason I, think it was, I remember that, dude. I mean, Jay wanted you to join really bad. But uh, the reason we, me yeah. and Kip played on it was when uh -huh. I did my first album, The Ravers, in 1980. Yep. Um, the At the release party. <laughs> um. Jay brought James Neal and Mick Zane, Mike Landauer. And I remember, is Mick the big tall guy? Yeah. Like he's like 6'8? 6'4, six, uh, six, I think. He died a few years ago. You, oh, dude, I'm sorry. Didn't he know had, that. He had brain cancer. He used to work on a lot of movies and he passed out one day and then found out he had brain cancer. So we we're in the kitchen. There's a big party. Kenny G was at the party. Tom Grant, all these jazz guys, a Tower of Power horn section was there because they they were on this label too. And we were in the kitchen drinking a few beers. And when James drinks, you know, a couple of beers, it's like he goes nuts. So yeah, he, he drank one of those KB loggers, like those big cans, uh, and then yep. goes out in the backyard. We don't see him for like 25 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> he, comes, about right. he comes back in stark naked and covered in this brown stuff and he it smelled and i go just like keith moon I go, oh dear boy that's a very natural aromatic scent you have on you have to <laughs> tell me what is that body cream he said i took a yeah, shit punch it man a punch it toner i took a shit and rolled in it oh. <laughs> and he opened up the fridge <laughs> grabbed another beer drank the beer and I said, oh, I think that's probably, you know, the best thing I've seen for skin in years. And looked at all of this, and it freaked my, my, Mike Landner out. And so he said, James took off and ran out the door. It was February and just snowed, uh -huh. totally naked, oh, yeah. running down uh -huh. the street like the world's greatest athlete. And Paul Kearney said, oh, I better go get him. He's going to get in trouble. <laughs> And so he picked him up oh, and no. he told me he couldn't get the the smell out of his car, but uh, Mike didn't want to play with him after that. So that's well, why I'm sure he would. Well, he did it when they were on tour with Slayer. Slayer used to tell him, uh -huh. you're in a crappy band, man. That's stupid clothes, stupid clothes. They get him drunk. And he took all his clothes off in Europe. And, you know, you, uh -huh. and back then he played like out in the country. So he uh -huh. went out and they didn't see him the whole night. Came back the next day covered in sheep shit. And the band had to, they had to drive to <laughs> like three hours with him in the back seat smelling like poop. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a nice odor. It's yeah. a really nice odor. Very <laughs> natural aroma. So speaking of you, I mean, yes. man, you blew us all away when I saw you. It's like, oh, and he sings oh. too. You were playing Shoot Soup by UFO and you used double I remember bass. that. And I thought, yes. I, I finally liked this song. <laughs> ah, yeah. And I wasn't a big UFO fan. The only reason we played is because John, the guitarist, loved Michael Schenker. 
So that it was guy. all about being well, play Michael Shaker, Michael Shaker, Michael Shaker. So it was all about Michael Shaker. He so was I, I was never a UFO fan, but uh, you know, they, they, John loved uh, Mikey. So that's why we played those tunes. But I wasn't a big fan. I mean, I I didn't get it. I was too young, man. It was it was his. You know, I mean, UFO was the '70s band. I was too young. I, you know, I was just a kid, so <laughs> I didn't quite get get weaned on that shit. You know, I wasn't weaned on on UFO and Zeppelin and all that stuff. I kind of I started getting. You know, when in the 80s, that's when I started like really getting into music and stuff really heavy. I mean, I like the rush stuff and all that, but I was still a little too young. And UFO was more of like an early 70s, wasn't it? Like 74, 75, uh, stuff like early, that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I did, I don't remember much of that. I was 10. So that wasn't quite, that wasn't quite in my wheelhouse at that point. Yeah. But you started early. Uh, yeah. I did. Uh, but I'm, you know, that, like again, that stuff was, I, I, I don't know what it was so tunnel vision on Kiss. It didn't even matter. Nothing mattered. It was Kiss in the world, you know? Yeah, Kiss was like Slayer back then. They were scary. I saw them <laughs> the first time with Rush at the Paramount, and the next time I saw them at the Coliseum with Cheap Park uh -huh. opening. And, yep. uh, man, they're amazing. And I had a great time. <laughs> but I, some older woman, she was 24. <laughs> I was 15. She came up, oh, she put dude, her arm around me. Turn me around, oh, start making out with me, and uh, things happen. At the end of the night, I said, "I gotta go." Things happen. I gotta go catch a bus home. She said, "We'll take you home." So we go out oh. to her truck, and her husband drove me to my oh, my, my house, and then they came in, used the bathroom, and oh, I love drum solos. So did she. Oh. <laughs> she worked in damage. <laughs> she would call me all the time, but uh, so. <laughs> You've got you've been with Journey how long now? All together. Oh, dude, well, with all together, well, with my little break. I mean, it would have been it was seventeen years that I had to take my little break. So, if I would have stayed in, it would have been twenty five years, almost wow. twenty twenty six coming up. Wow, twenty six years, yeah, long time, bro. long, long time. Neil's got you beat. Yeah. <laughs> I, we, saw the, we saw the years. We saw the original the original guitar. The Journey had a a name before Journey, and they had another guitar player that actually started the band. We saw he died yeah. this year. He went to he quit yeah. he quit to go to medical school. Yeah, I, 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 Tigner, George Tigner. And the 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 name of the band was really funny. Was it Rumple Foreskin? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. It was Rumple Foreskin, dude. <laughs> well, they were they were checking out names, and I guess it was some contest that they have with the radio station to name this band. And people were coming up with that. And Rumple Foreskin was one. I was like, that's a cool name, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like. I thought it was kind of cool. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> and uh, you put out another uh, album with Revolution Saints. Yeah, we've been doing that thing. That's been kind of fun. I mean, I got one more record with uh, Revolution Saints, and I think we're going to finally call it quits. But yeah, we had one, two. Let me see. Let me, I got to remember how many. One, two, three, four. The next one will be our fifth record wow. coming out. And that'll be out in January. Yeah, dude, we've been busy. And what good, that? but we never can tour, dude. There's no touring. I mean, you can't tour with the band because we're always working. I got Journey. Uh, Jeff's got freaking uh, Foreigner, and, and Joel's got White Snake and, and Trans Siberian. We don't have time. There's just no time. Schedules don't permit. So, and don't mind me walking around, dude. You know who I am. I'm oh. a walker when I talk. Oh, <laughs> were you a hyperactive child? No, I was not. I was very mellow. I was just a <laughs> very, very young, mellow guy. Very, very mellow. Well, I'm going to tell you <laughs> stories and put you. <laughs> Oh no, you're fun. Remember, we went to San Francisco. We were fun, dude. You and I were fun. You know, and Jeff was as fun as he could be. You know, because Jeff was, you know, he was the business guy and he was the serious. You know, and it, it was all Jeff, very serious. No, nah. I was just having a blast. No, man. smoking weed and eating corn nuts, and chocolate milk. That was that was what we did, and we, we played music. We rode in the in the zoo van, in the van with you know Kip, yeah. and me, and Taylor, and Sean. Yep. Yep. The road crew yep. and. The bong made out of a, a water bottle from a bike. Dude, you remember that? It was it was Malcolm? We had Malcolm. He had a little. He had a box, and Malcolm was our fish, and we called him a fish. So when we were on the phone, we talking code. It was like, "Hey, dude, do you have any um, fish poop for Malcolm?" And we knew we were looking for some fish poop. I mean, that's what it was. So Malcolm had a little box, and his eyes were all red in the box. We painted a little picture of him on the box, and it was like he was like this, like yeah, that's Malcolm. He's all red faced and red eyed, and we had to feed him fish food. <laughs> and good day. We, we yeah, we played at the old Waldorf, and at the gig you threw a symbol out, <laughs> like, odd, like odd job in 
James Bond, and you hit Danny. She who was walking across the stage, you hit oh, him right in the head. Boring. Drop him oh. like a bad habit. You know what it was, Sunday. dude? It wasn't I threw it. I had those those damn spring symbol things. They were made of springs to keep it from from you know the so it would from save the symbols, you know. Breaking, and yeah. uh yeah, it didn't tighten up very tight. The one I had, and I hit it, and it was springing back and forth, right? And it flew right off and hit Danny. Good times. And then Poor guy. later on that night, oh, yeah. we were at the hotel, <laughs> and Sean had fallen oh, asleep. Oh, right. And yep. you, 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 El Marco, did say. <laughs> oh, dude, we put six, six, six on his forehead, the he whole said, thing. kill me, I'm a time. fag. <laughs> and then his friend called and said, I'm at this Denny's about 30 miles up the road. Send him yep. up here. Wake his ass up and send him here. Oh, <laughs> you oh. said, you jangled the keys and said, Dude, you, bro, your friend's here. You got to go meet him. And he takes off. Oh, my God. And dude. Danny was, I'll never forget it, dude, because he walked by a window and he saw it. He went, Fuck <laughs> he, he knew it was me. Everybody knew it was me. Well, you've got an artistic <laughs> style that can't be. I got, I got that thing, dude. I got that thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And, and then we, Danny was in the band with some 13 year old girl. And so we went out was he, there. Was she 13? She was too young to, you know. Dude, she, 13 will get you 20. Well, oh, my gosh. Back then, it was like, you know, normal. Like I guess. And I, said, oh I, my gosh. I was kind of drunk, and I said, "Come on, you guys, let's go sing." And Jeff and uh, Jesse and Danny were, you know. Yeah, the, remember we shook the van. Yeah, we well, shook the van and saying, "God rest you, merry gentlemen," or something no, like that. We, well, we said, to the world, the world has come." Something we, like that. We can't. We said, "You know, come, all the faithful." <laughs> Yeah, oh God, Come that's on, what it you was. faithful. Because oh. Danny kept saying, don't tell my girlfriend. And what he didn't oh. know, that oh. Kip was banging her, his girlfriend for months while he was at work. You're kidding. No. You're kidding. <laughs> what was the girlfriend's name? I forget her name. Um, Kelly. Oh, my God. Kelly, that's right. She was pretty. Pretty girl. And we one time, Kip and I and him played a, a, a party for all of mm. or Miss Oregon pageant. It was all <laughs> girls except for us. And they were doing blow in the back, their party out. That was a fun night. Mm. Danny, she got so drunk that Danny had a carrier out over his shoulder. Dude, when was I wasn't in the band? Was I around there? No, I don't think I was no, around. Was no, it? no, before that. Way before. Way before me. I mean way before. Yeah. But uh what's that FM radio or radio nation? Yeah, in What's another that? with a bass player from Chicago that sings that you were in. Oh, Generation Radio. Yeah, it was with uh, myself, uh, uh, Jason Chef, and uh, Jay Demarcus from Rascal Flatts. Yeah, yeah and Jason was in Chicago. Yeah, and it was it was dude. It was a great band. It, I I loved it. It was great music. But you know, when Journey called, I I couldn't pass it up. I mean, I just couldn't. I well, couldn't pass it up. I mean, this with Generation Radio, we're gonna have to start over. And 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 those guys are great players and. I just couldn't pass it up, dude. I mean, I you know they're they're like brothers to me, you know the Journey guys. So, but you know, um, yeah, you know you can't get into hard. an elevator, a store. You can't turn on the TV without hearing a Journey song. And you sing, know, bro. you sing so great, didn't you? Sing the whole set for I'll a while. It, well, I did one with uh, with Neil. We did a, a benefit concert with Greg Raleigh, myself, and Neil, and uh, Marco Mendoza on bass. And uh, it was called Journey Through Time. And it was all the old stuff that, that Journey doesn't play, you know, because we have to do the hits when we're playing those big venues and stuff. So uh, it was all the stuff that, you know, Christy Perry, you know, a lot of the older, older stuff. And then some of the stuff with Perry and Raleigh when they would duet. But, uh, yeah, I ended up singing, I think it was like 24 songs, you know, for that. And that was fun. No, that's, dude, that was great. That's a journey so I know. I saw Journey open for uh, Blueish or Cult on July 4th, 1976. Yeah, dude, that was that was you know that was the one that I was introduced to by guys that were like twenty four and twenty five, and they were they were bringing me those records and having me learn the stuff, you know. So I knew that stuff way before you know they were like you know uh, pop sensations. Greg so, Raleigh did his uh, solo record when we were recording Man's Best Friend. He was in the studio mm -hmm. during the day, and we were at night. He was a nice guy. I liked him a lot. Oh, I never met him, dude. I didn't meet him then. I mean, I, I you know back then I. I had no idea. All I remember was uh, smoking Mooka's weed. He had great, great weed, Mooka's man. <laughs> oh, Wild yeah. dogs all about corn nuts. <laughs> well, you and me and the road crew, but Danny, Danny and yeah. Jeff was definitely 
And the they were the drinkers. They were the drinkers. Yeah, they had the drunk van and they had the fun van. <laughs> last night we were there, though, that hippie girl at the studio at Prairie Sun. I remember her well. Mushroom tea. And Danny drank I... some. Oh, shut up, did yeah. he? Yeah, and we drove home that night. <laughs> was he freaking out, bro? I don't remember that. Oh, yeah. I don't remember. He, he was actually really fun that night. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I don't remember that. I remember what he used to call weed. He'd call it wee hawking. Remember? Yeah. Wee hawking. I don't know where he got that, but it's funny. Or, and we had remember eight... he had his keychain? He had a keychain with a guy on an arrest, and I go, who is that guy? He goes, Mike. Mike who? He goes, Mike Ease. Mike Ease, Mike Ease. That's what his, his <laughs> keychain was. He's like, and... just, he was funny, dude. He was funny. Yeah. I miss Danny. Yeah, he he died. I was working for Raven. I was helping him load in, and I got a call uh-huh. from Troy Stutzman, and he said, hey, uh, Matt, Danny died. Oh, uh, uh, dude, I, I remember I was in um, Pasadena uh, at Pasadena Recovery. I was in my third skin of rehab and when he passed. So I was that was kind of rough. That was kind of rough. Do you let <laughs> you let her in rehab? <laughs> nah, nah. I'm the kid. No, dude, I'm good at playing drums, singing and, and doing drugs. That was my thing. You know, so well, thank God I got sobriety now. Thank you, God I got sobriety. What drummer, thing. what great drummer isn't, though, you know? I, Neil Peart. Like, <laughs> he was the only one I knew that never did that kind of stuff. Oh, I, that I know just, of. I, I don't know. I watch a lot of Rush documentaries, and those guys sound like fun guys. And Yeah. Especially they, 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 Al, they never take it too seriously. Alex Leisland says he used to do the thing called the bag when they were on tour with Kiss. He yep. put a laundry bag on, and he said, he was laughing about this. I blew, Gene Simmons was, Trying to pick up these women, and I totally blew it for him. <laughs> oh. He said, "But <laughs> well, of course you do." The, the fun <laughs> hotel room was aces after the show. I never saw that. <laughs> I uh, never got to see aces. I never got to see kiss. It's on YouTube. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Well, I mean, I never saw him back. I saw him when I was eleven. Um, it was um, uh, my drum teacher took me to see him, uh, and it was um, kiss and rush and. Um, was it Cactus or Beck? I think it was Beck Bogart and Apathy. I'm not sure. Wow. But I think it was Cactus or Vanilla Fox, one of those bands that Carmine was in way back in the day. And that was at the Paramount in 1974, five. Yeah, dude, back in the day. I think it was on the Dress to Kill tour. Uh, yes, but that's when Rush was on. I believe it was Caress of Steel. There, there's the Crest of Steel Tour Fly by Night. I don't remember what, but I remember the guy had all these drums and played them all. And here's Peter Chris with all these drums and didn't do much with them at all. But he still was my hero, you know. But then I, I saw that's when the first time I was introduced to Rush, Maddie. Yeah. And when I saw that, I was like, that's it. That's the king. I started following Neil Peart constantly. Everything he did, every record with the exception of the first one I had. You know, I, I remember buying the first one and went, wait, this is not the same guy. Because I and, and you could tell by the drumming, you know, I was like, well, yeah, it's definitely not the same guy. But um, yeah, for me, it was, that was it. After I saw that, I was like, I was still a big Kiss fan, but I was learning to play drums listening to, to Neil. That was Joe, my thing. Joe Fazzolari and I would sit in my room and figure out the drum rolls. Like, oh, yeah. You know, dude, oh, yeah. That's how it I goes. mean, I, like, you know, yeah. Bangkok and all this stuff. Oh, I'm passing to Bangkok, dude. Yeah. I knew, I knew it was funny. The other day, I was with a buddy of mine. Um, he's my life coach, and um, he's, his name is Troy. And uh, he, we were in Palm Springs. He got a house in Palm Springs as well. He's here in Oregon, and you know he's done really well. But um, he he put on. I don't remember what song. I think it was. Um, gosh, what record was? Because he had all that stuff, and he just put it on. And I knew the songs. I mean, we were. I think we were playing Hemisphere. He, he was playing it, and I was playing along to it on his dashboard. And he's like, <laughs> I remember all that stuff. Like, dude, it's ingrained into my psyche. That stuff I will never forget because those were my formative years. So I, mean, I remember every lick. It was like, and I hadn't heard it in years. So you know, that stuff was just stuck in me. It, you know, Neil was such a. I, when he passed, dude, it screwed me up. It screwed me up bad because uh, I sat. I was doing actually recording for with Generation Radio, and uh, they knew that he had passed, and they did. They could tell I didn't know. I, I would have been freaking out, right? So they waited till the, the session was over and said, "This is, by the way, um, Neil passed away." And I sat down in the chair literally for like an hour and just sat, didn't say a word, bro. Just sat. Yeah, thinking so about it, like, oh, man. you know, he was sick for a while. It, it seems like, yeah, and nobody knew, Maddie. Nobody yeah, freaking he, knew. He didn't. Tell That's anybody. how cool that band was. 
yeah, it's like, you know what? Whoever needs to know doesn't need to know. And we're just going to keep it like that. And, you know, we're retiring because of his arthritis. And that's all we we thought it was his arthritis that was the reason he was, you know, calling it a day. But it wasn't. He was, you know, we didn't know he was sick. I had no idea. The more no movies clue. I see about Rush, the more I love the guys in the band. They've got yeah, a dude, great sense people, of humor. Matt. I've got a, a friend that's of mine. That's what I love too, Matt. That's what I love about you, though. You have that, you know, you didn't take the whole thing so damn seriously. Like, you know, you know we have to do this. We have to look a certain way. It's like, you know what, Matt? You're an entertainer. And, and you're you're fantastic as an entertainer and as a vocalist. I mean, you had a great sense of melody, Matty. But you entertained the crowd. I wasn't you just standing up there just freaking rocking back and forth and running around and doing the David Lee Roth. You were an entertainer. And, and that's what set us apart from every other band. We were musically, we were ass kicking. We were ass kicking. You had the melodies. We had the songs. We had the hooks. But when we went on stage, dude, it was all about you, you and me. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes I would turn around and I get lost watching you because you you made Tommy yeah. Lee look lazy. Oh, dude, yeah, oh, I was crazy. But, but you know, the funny thing is, though, I look back and I think the chemistry that you and I and Jeff and Danny had would that was never matched again. It just yeah. it wasn't there after yeah. after you know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we had a thing, dude. And when Tahedda came in the band, that John guy screwed up all the chemistry but jeff and i still i mean i still keep in touch with jeffy and um we're actually working on a, a little project with alan seahorn uh who just beat cancer by the way dude he just beat it kicked it so proud of him man so he went through some hell i don't know if you knew that or not but but yeah. alan was dude it was bad 52 weeks of chemo that whole freaking thing and he beat it he's doing good so i was over actually at uh alan's house who lives around the corner from me here and uh, with Jeff, and we were listening to songs and stuff and talking about the dogs' days. I had a chemistry with Jeff musically. You and I were freaking Kendrick Spirits, you know, but Jeff and I had a thing. I mean, I just, when he would play a riff, I could, I, I got it, you know what I mean? And I could come up with a really killer beat with his stuff because he's a very colorful player. It wasn't about speed and flash on guitar, dude. He, he had it. a color. He, a lot like Alex Lifeson. He reminded me of a freaking Alex Lifeson on steroids. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because the cordings and the phrasings, he, would, he just had the coolest cordings, the way he would cord stuff. It was just unbelievable. Dude, the, I might lose you. I've got about 6%, so let's keep going until my the, phone dies because I don't have when, my charger when here. You first, my, when, you first, first, when you first came yeah. over and destroyed Jamie's drum set. <laughs> oh, yeah, he was happy about that. <laughs> you broke, I, was, I you, felt bad. You Dude, broke the, the kick pedal like, in the house. But, but I, I didn't know why. I think why is he using these crappy Ludwig drum heads? They were terrible drum heads. Because he didn't I mean, hit them hard. Thin. No, he didn't. Yeah, and, and I destroyed him the first half. I'm so and bad. you go, hey man, I gotta go. <laughs> yeah, well, look at the time. I gotta run. No, oh, dude, I knew I just, he's gonna be pissed. You take it. But out I think the... I got him some new heads, didn't I? I think I ended up buying a new heads. I, I, I was actually a nice kid then. You I know? think you know, Dan, I don't remember. Mark. But Jeff said, "I do." Uh, yeah, well, I said, you, I, I, "I said, what do you think?" And Jeff goes, "He's too young, he's too fat, too fat. he doesn't make he's too loud." And yeah, Clover plays. And I said, "Yep, there's I don't see anything wrong with any of those things." <laughs> What's wrong with that? You mean he's a good drummer? <laughs> the last thing he said was, "And we can't, we, we'll never be able to control him." I go. That's, That's a right. perfect drummer. How many bad drummers do you know? John Bonham, bad drummer, greatest drummer on the planet. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Leonard Hayes from Y&T, big old guy, dude. He could play. Oh, that yeah. fucker could play. Hey, do you, you know, know Mike? Do you know Mike Heller from Pure Factory? I don't know him, but I know of him. I know he's playing. He's a great he's, player. He's playing with Raven now. I know, dude, and he's a monster drummer, dude. Oh, I mean, man. anybody that can play the Pure Factory stuff like he did, man, because he was precise. He was like, you know, you got Gene Hoglund who's playing, whose gene is, is a monstrosity in his own right, dude. Gene Hoglund is unbelievable. And he had Hoglund stuff down. Oh, uh, you know, he, he knew it, that, you know, he played it verbatim. And I don't know if you've listened to Gene play at all, Matty, but he's like, he's like me, only he's taking it about 100 steps higher. He's a monster, I've monster worked, player. I've worked on a show with Korn at the yeah. Boda, and that drummer, some guy said he used to play in a band well, with right? Jake Casanova, and he goes, "Oh, really?" He just like, you know, almost like I'm not worthy. Yeah, he was just raving about. Oh you. no, my, no, dude. You know what, uh, Ray? I, he he said that I'm one of one of his biggest influences. And dude, I mean, he smokes my ass. I mean, that guy's unbelievable. So it's like to hear that was like humbling. I'm like, but dude, come on, listen to you. No, he he and I become really good friends, man. He's 
raised one of my favorite players, man, of of our generation. But he, you know, now that he's in corn, he's finally getting his due. But dude, he played with David Lee Roth. He's not, you know, an army of anyone. He was a badass back then. And then when he got in corn, dude, is is finally his light got to shine. And he's just ridiculous, Maddie. He's ridiculous. Hey, who was that Rick. guy, George? Was it George Bellis? You were recording with him in Portland, yes. and he called yep. me up and yep. said, "This stuff is cooking my mind. I got to take a break. Can I come over?" And you came over, and yeah. uh, oh, dude, it was so intense. His stuff was all time signature stuff, and dude, I didn't, I didn't know time signatures. The only time signature I knew was Rush Records, <laughs> I mean, seven fours, stuff like that. Nothing is like. I was like, where the hell's one? <laughs> Where, you know, and it was so thinking man. It was so thinking man's music, dude. I, I, it fried me. It did. It fried me. I couldn't grasp it. I'm, I'm a rock drummer, uh, but you know that kind of stuff, dude, went over my head. Like Mike Portnoy, amazing drummer. But Mike you know, he, loves he knows you. All of that. Oh, dude, I love I've, him. I've he's talked just, to him, and he, thing. he just raved about you for about five oh. message things. But see, that's the thing, man. He's so, so. I mean. If anybody could replace Neil Peart and Rush, he's the guy. That's all I got to say. Because he can do that and more. He's unbelievable, man. And what a songwriter. The guy writes all the lyrics for Dream Theater. He, he, wow. And he's back in the band. I'm putting my shoes on. Sorry, Maddie. But he's back in the band now, you know, in Dream Theater. Hey, you know, Paul Gilbert <laughs> lives in Portland now. I heard, dude. I heard he did. I, you know, there, uh, was a, there was a point when I was being talked to about possibly being the drummer in Mr. Big, you know, after Pat died, which is, God rest in, in peace, he's a sweet guy, sweetest guy. But yeah, they were talking about him, but Paul's got, a, I guess, a drummer in, in town here that he that he uses that's in the band now, in Mr. Big. But yeah, I knew Paul lived here. There's a lot of guys, actually, um, uh, Christian Martucci, who is the guitarist for uh, Stone Sour, he lives in Bend. You got Chino Marino lives in Bend. I mean, all these people are from this area now. They all moved. And uh, but Matt, but Matt, bass, we huh? were here first. The, we were here first. The bass player we for uh, uh, Chuck Berry, Buck Cherry, he lives Buck here too. Cherry. Oh, yeah, Kelly, dude. Kelly and I grew up together here in Salem. He was in a band called, I think it was called Harlot. And he was a bass player back then. He was just a young kid, but dude, he's a monster player too. But hey. Kelly's been here and shit. We grew up together. I wanted to ask you this before you go. Yes, yes, sir. and uh. What's it like? I mean, I see these pictures of you. You know, your face is bigger than the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> it look. It's like, yeah. <laughs> What's it like? Can you hear anything up there when you when you're playing hear arenas and stadiums? Do I hear what? I mean, I, I've got the in ears, bro. You I know, mean, so I'm I, not I, hearing anything. I've stood on the stage after my first stage hand gig was in sync, and I thought. Uh, the place isn't that big when you got people in. When it's empty, yeah. it looks like it's empty. Oh, it's massive. You know, yeah, I mean, you know how it is with the, I don't know if you use in ears with your stuff or not, man. But yeah, it's, I'll tell you, in ears have made things a lot, a lot better, a lot easier on me. I'm telling you, because, you know, when I was back in the Aussie days, I mean, we I had two subwoofers, uh, two tw two fifties, two twelves, and a freaking horn, you know, one of those freaking high end horns for a monitor. It was like, oh, it just blew my head off. But now, man, you got the in ears, you just turn it down. I mean, I, it's like, I don't hear much of drums. I, I, you know, cause I got the drums right in front of me. So I don't hear them. I just hear it for, just for the attack a little bit. So I hear what's going on tack wise. You know but how it's it mostly feels. For me, no, dude, I, I got a, a butt kicker. You know what a butt kicker is? Oh yeah. He's put it on his, your yeah. throne. Yeah. You put it on the throne and, and, and so I can feel what I'm hitting uh, bass drum wise, but it's mostly guitar. Uh, well, not really. Uh, Neil, I have guitar for to know where I'm at. Yeah, I sing off of keyboards. I, that's that's what I'm singing off of. If I'm singing, I have to have the keyboards cranked because I sing off of that. That's where I get my 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 uh, my pitch. So that's that's I pitch off of uh, keyboards and then um, a little bit of background vocals, a little bit of Arnell, and a lot of Todd, a lot of Todd. So tell me about it. You've got a stadium tour with Def Leppard. Yes. Steve yep. Miller, Hart. Steve Miller. Journey. Yep. And yep. cheap trick, cheap trick, dude. It's gonna be I, amazing. I knocked Robin Zander over when they played here with Saxon, nineteen eighty. Good job. I uh, <laughs> he was he's coming into the bathroom at uh, Louis, oh. Louis La Bamba's, the place we took our first picture. Oh, La Bamba's, dude! I remember that. And somebody said, "Hey, they're here." So I finished peeing. You know, I always gotta pee. I peed out the window. Hey, we all the van. Man, we 
I, you know, but I uh, <laughs> ran out and knocked him over. He's a little guy. I knocked Barbara Plan <laughs> over that night. He played when you, they were looking at you too. Uh, dude, I love Cheap Trick. I remember when we did with the, it was Heart Cheap Trick and Journey. I think it was two thousand eight. I think it was, and um, um, uh, Tom Peterson had an old Rickenbacker bass that he gave me at like a seventy four. I think it was. Cool. He gave me this Rickenbacker bass, and I just I I still got it to this day. But it's oh you know, yeah, dude. I mean, they were great people, and but man, what a great drummer. But it's funny is is um. Uh, Rick's son, Dax, plays just like Bun on drums, just like him. It's crazy. It's crazy. The feel, everything, dude. Everything. This is my Iceman. Let me see. I can't see. I can't see. You got to remember, dude, I, I don't have my glasses, so I'm no. blind as a freaking bat. Hold on. Let me find him. Hold on. How much I've got left? I got I got 5% left. We got some time. Go ahead. Mm. Hold on, I, I had a, there's a guy named Kevin Gron. He had one made. I know Kevin. Yeah, and uh, he had Never one made. To him. I don't know. He's, I think it's called Harley Gron now, but he had one made. Uh, I've been because he liked Paul Stanley, and I, I yep. traded him a Thunderbird bass for that guitar. Yeah. You see that? Oh, dude, that's beautiful. That was his? No, that, uh, no, this is a Sam Topman model. I, I uh, played the crap nice. out of that guitar. The I bet you did. Ah, and, good days. <laughs> For the ravers, yeah. The ravers. The yeah. band. Let's see. Very cool. He keeps talking. I'm just gathering my stuff together because I'm going to have to go get my freaking charger. <laughs> my daughter had surgery last night, dude. She um up at OHSU. So uh, Dee Dee just texted me and said she came out of surgery good. Everything is great. I'm like, that's fantastic news. That's good to know. So OH I'm happy about that. My little, OHSU. My little girl did. Yeah. Good. Oh, it yeah. saved my life. And you're the only guy that called me in the hospital. Oh, dude. Well, you know what, bro? That's yeah. kind of blows I, my I mind. That. It pisses me off that a lot of people did. Well, dude, you're family to me. I mean, even though we don't talk, you know, there's sometimes we don't talk for a couple of years or a year or whatever. We can we can come back after not talking. And it's like we never left. We ne we just yeah. pick up where we left off. But that's because we have a we have a bond, bro. I mean, shit, dude. If it wasn't for you and Barney, none of it would happen with Neil. Because I moved down because of Varney. And if I hadn't been met Varney, I had I met Varney through you. I mean, the credit where credit's due, bro. And you're a brother to me. I, you know, I never get when people, you know, go off the face of the earth and they just, they walk away. And I mean, people get busy. I get busy. There's times when I can't talk or I, you know, whatever, I'm, I'm scatterbrained or whatever. And there's so many people you meet on the road, but there are certain people in your life that you will remember and have touched you and have become a part of your chemistry and a part of your creative life and you're one of those man thank, I mean, fuck, thank come you. on part of my language but come on you know credit yeah. where credit's due part of the deal with when we were doing dr mastermind you know he, mm -hmm. he sent me paul gilbert and that didn't work out and mm -hmm. uh he then he said how about well, i said though. i said how about ingway and ingway wasn't available then i said he goes right. well can you get dean i said i think so so i got a hold of yep. you and you said sure and i said can you get him any work down there with session work and he said i can do yeah. better than that i can yeah, get tony mcalpine needs a drummer and it's a dude, pay no, I that said, worked out so good man you know that dude i mean i was doing records for mike then for about what is it um give me a second it was about i think a two hundred dollars a record i would do for mike 200 bucks a record and i remember doing three in one day <laughs> three i did a, i did it no it was great dude i did a um um, what was it? Uh, Bub, uh, Deep Purple tribute. I did a Rush tribute, and I did uh, Tony's record Premonitions, but that took a little longer. That wasn't like a day, but I started it. But, you but also, yeah, man. I mean, I said, I'm very fortunate, man. He said, "I'll put some money in the budget if you can, if I can get a guy with a truck, and I got some weirdo with a truck and you know, hauled your stuff." Out. <laughs> Do you remember when we drove down there, all of us? Who was the little kid that? That I, oh, what was his name? Clyde. Away from Clyde. Clyde. Yeah. Clyde and Jerry. And I remember you know, that. What a great kid. What's funny is Jerry's daughter got a hold of me on YouTube and said she loved the band Dr. Mastermind. And I said, oh, I, I am Dr. Mastermind, and your dad's Dad, on the oh, cover. Dude, and she said, I got to tell really? you this. I, I was doing an interview the other day, and one of the interviewers goes, You mentioned you and Dr. Mastermind. I said, Yeah, dude, if you look really close. You know, because he knew who you were. I said, if you look really close, right next to him, up in the corner, there's a little gas mask, a black gas mask. And that's me underneath that. That's me. A lot of people <laughs> didn't know that. So that's pretty cool, man. 
That's I love that album, and I wrote the the solo song for you to have. You know, I thought yeah. nothing nothing else. Here's a way to spotlight. Your oh, drumming. dude, you remember what Kerrang said though? Do you remember no. what they said about it? it was, the drum solo was the the most boring drum solo ever committed to vinyl. I never forgot that. It was, Never num- it was number one for three months in that magazine. I know. What does that tell you, dude? What does that tell you? <laughs> <laughs> so, dude, no, what no. do we got here? I got. I got to get in the car here. I got to go. With this. Uh, I got three percent, bro. Do you want to okay. reconvene on this and do a part two? Uh, we can do it. Another I'll tell you day. what. You give me. No, Let's we don't do another day. Give me like twenty minutes. I got to go grab my charger. I, it's over I, at my house. I've got. And stuff, I'm here at, at Ashley's house. I've got stuff to do. So why don't we do a second part next week? Okay. 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 Fair enough, dude. So, Let's do this next week. Sir. Thank you, Dean. And uh, we're not eating course. Happy and New we'll Year. For, and I want to interview you, you, dude. I want to ask you about stuff. So you've inter- you've interviewed me, and we've talked. I get the next one. Fair enough. I get the next one. I get to ask you questions because I don't know much about the Ravers. I really don't, dude. Okay. The guy, okay, my, the, my, the guy that produced that record retired as a universal, the whole uh, senior vice president of the entire universal music division. You're kidding, dude. No, he started with, at uh, first he was JFK's publicist. He got shot. Right. He got a job at CBS and was working there and left with Clive Davis, and they started Arista. He worked for yep. Arista, and in between that and moving from New York to uh, L.A., to take over MCA yep. when he helped this guy in Portland start this independent label. And he, he oh. was my friend until the day that he died. I'd, I'd call up and they'd know me and they'd just pass me through. Really? Yeah. They said, well, you, dude, you are a member of court. I mean, come on. You are a member of court. <laughs> That's my problem. No, I, 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 look, dude, let me call you. I will call you next week. We'll talk a little bit more, but I got to head out. I okay. Run. Thank you very much and happy new year. Happy new year, bro. And- Happy New Year to you. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, thank you.